God is the love that I am. How blessed we are, how blessed. Welcome to this evening's service. Welcome to you here in the sanctuary. If your phone's on off, eh, turn them off. Welcome to those on Facebook and Zoom. We're so grateful you're here with us. And you know what, you guys too, phone's off. Eh, nobody need to call you right now but God. So how about if God is in this place? Is God in this place? I believe so. Absolutely. There you go. Thank you, Sam. God is in this place. So, God is in this place. Let's pray. Taking a breath right here. Recognizing right here in this moment that this breath, it is the breath of God. It is God that is always breathing each and every one of us. We can never be separate, for God is right within our heart, our mind, our soul, our spiritual and astral being. Right here and right now, we are in perfect alignment. So tonight is blessed. Something wonderful is happening because we are in the yes the yes of God, the yes of good, the yes of the flow. Something beautiful is happening because we are standing in our truth. God is, I am, God is, I am. And tonight, right here and right now, we're blessing everybody in our ministry. We're blessing our beautiful Reverend Sydney, knowing that right where she is, something is bubbling up inside of her. Something delicious is happening, and it brings forth a word for each and every one of us that makes us remember who and what we are, incarnations of the Most High God. How wonderful that is to come together in this magnificent field of perfection, of God's perfection. I bless our, our music ministry. So grateful to have Sam and Gia here with us. So grateful to have our media staff here with us, knowing that all is good, all is blessed. Something wonderful is happening because we remember, because we know, because we say yes, because we are standing in our truth. God, the great Creator created each and every one of us in its image and likeness and right here and right now. We celebrate that. We rejoice in that. Something glorious is happening. And I'm so grateful, so very grateful. So I just release this word into the law of mind, knowing that all is well, all is good, all is unfolding in a perfect and magnificent way. Thank you, beloved Mother, Father, God. Thank you, beloved I am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I release this word into the law of mind, and together we say, and so it is, amen. Yeah, and let's say the Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen, amen. Amen. Today. Singing high G's without a license. <laughs> that was really nice. <laughs> Hello, welcome. I am Reverend Sydney. Uh, that's my water. Okay, we're talking about your superpower, spiritual vision. It's the vision that goes beyond seeing. It's the vision that goes beyond what we recognize and what we know. It's that vision that we must access that takes us to a higher level of willingness, of possibility, of letting go of our resistance and moving into the real, true, divine potentiality of who we are as beings of God. So I want to start with a story. There's a legend, an ancient legend that comes from China. And, and a, a, a king was looking across his kingdom 
and knowing that soon his time on the planet would be ending. He didn't have an heir though, he didn't have a son, didn't have a daughter. And so he thought, I will need to find someone. Who and how do I do this? How can I find someone who will have that, that integrity, the ability to lead whether they see it or don't? Can they lead? Can they see truth though they see it not? So he came up with a plan and he called all of the children of the village to come into his palace. And he said, one of you is going to become my king. You will lead all of these people. And I have for each of you seeds. I want you to go home and plant these seeds and take care of the plants, put them in a pot, love them, nourish them. And in a year, that person whose seed has flourished the most, who's, whoever has that most glorious, robust plant, will be heir to my throne. So the children were all very, very excited and, and they all got their seeds and they all went home and there was one little boy, Chang, and Chang got his seeds and he lived with his mother and they were quite poor and they put it in the pot with the dirt and they watered it and loved it and paid attention to it and nurtured it. And he would go to school or be out in the village and see all the other children and they would brag about how big their plants were getting and they were just robust and just leaves and just, you know, uh, just glorious. And Chang would go home in shame because nothing was happening with his. Nothing, nothing was going on. It was just a pot of dirt. And this went on and when other people, other children in the village found out that he had this apparently failure of a plant and knew that he would never be king, they made fun of him, they shamed him, and he cried. It was very hard for him. Finally, the year ended, and all of the children showed up at the palace with their plants, and he did not want to go because he was quite ashamed that all he had was a pot of dirt. But he went, and all of these other children with their plants, and they're just going crazy like that, and and one by one, they went before the king to show them how beautiful and how robust and lush their plants were, and he just would wave them aside. And finally, there was only one child left, and it was Cheng, and he didn't want to go past the king, and the king demanded that he do so. And he finally did, holding his, his pot and his head, looking at his feet, because he was so ashamed, and the king said, you, Cheng are to be my heir. You are the next king of this village. And there was a stunned, stunned silence. Nobody was as shocked as Cheng. And the king said, I gave all of you seeds that had been boiled. Not one of them was going to live. And yet all of you except this young man lied. You put plants in where there shouldn't have been a plant. He is the one who will inherit this because he's able to see what is there and to accept it, to acknowledge it, whether he wanted to or not. And so Cheng was the young man who was brought into the palace to succeed the king. So spiritual vision is, is that thing of seeing when you can't see of knowing good is present when you don't sense it to be present. There's a Buddhist idea that says when darkness is, when, when darkness is as apparent as all there is, the light is still present. When all you see is pain, the wholeness is still present. When you, all you see or perceive is lack or loss or death, life is still present. It has not gone away. Spiritual vision is seeing God as the foundation of all, the source of all and the substance of all. It's knowing that there is a greater idea, whether we can see it or not. It is that fundamental integrity of the universe that knows there's a greater plan, there's a greater idea. And yet most of us did not grow up with a, a, a powerful belief in this, faith in this, or the knowing of how to practice this kind of idea 
spiritual vision, let alone call it our superpower, right? So the spiritual vision is seeing, seeing, and let's put quotations. I, don't you hate people who do that? But I'm gonna do it. It is seeing the good, the true, and the beautiful everywhere and in everyone without reservation, without discrimination, without opinion or judgment. It's the divine focus in which we keep the eye single. Now just know that it's not about the physical eye. Sight in, the, in wisdom texts, in the Bible, and in, in, in spiritual texts is all about perception and understanding, as is light. Those are the things that are the representatives, the metaphors for knowing, for divine knowing, for a greater knowing. So spiritual vision, this idea of seeing the good, the true, and the beautiful everywhere and in everyone without reservation, discrimination, opinion, or judgment, I got to say, I don't know about you, but my consistency and my expertise in this could use a lot more practice because I am really, really good. I, I have a skill. It's kind of a, it's, it's a savant ability to point out what's wrong with other people and what they should be doing and how they should do it. And then if they did, I would like them more. You know, they'd be okay. They'd be beautiful in my sight. Their lives would be so much better. But this brings up an idea that spiritual vision is something that we actually all have the capacity to have and to live from and to practice, but there are blocks to it. Often it's our ego, like the children in the village. Their egos got in the way of actually trusting, of actually trusting. You know, and, and you think of this idea, and a child shall lead them. Even the children couldn't trust. Right? And this one little boy who didn't trust but did it anyway. And perhaps that's the definition of faith. Perhaps the def that is the definition of faith. You know, we have blocks to our superpower of spiritual vision, but if we don't reveal those blocks and remove them, dissolve them, or at the very most make friends with them, then our spiritual vision won't be what it could be. So here's one of the blocks that I see. Judgment starting with myself, my self-judgment, and of course of others, because you know, if I'm gonna judge me, then I'm certainly gonna judge you. you know, I don't wanna be here all alone, right? Yet when I'm sitting a field, in a field of self-condemnation or self-judgment, um, it's really impossible for me to feel good about you or to feel good about anybody or anything, right? And all I know, and, and what I know is it's because I become my own filter. I become my lens of perception. I am the perceptual lens. And if I can't imagine myself having joy or, or bliss, I certainly can't have that capacity to hold that intention for you. And plus, if I'm really, really going to anchor in that, I don't want to hold it for you, right? Most of us, they, we, we want to compete. There's a part of our ego that says, well, if I can't have it, you can't have it. We project ourselves for better or for worse onto all people places, things, and events in the world. And we, we, we create stories about them, right? We create stories. Can you imagine the stories that the kids were creating about the plant? Consider the story that Chang created about that plant. You know, we write stories about what's happening without knowing, without knowing any of it, without using spiritual vision. You know, we, as we project ourselves, I think it's like, like going to a theater and seeing a really great movie and then suddenly projecting my own cheesy home movie onto the, the screen, so now the, the, the hero and the heroine are doing this, and my, my cheesy home movie is like interacting with them and ruining the whole thing, right? And all I'm seeing is my cheesy home movie and not this glorious specter that might be going on. So I do know that my daily 24-7 commitment and intention is to see life through spirit's lens. That's a big one. And yet, that's what we do here. That's what we teach here. That's what our practitioners do here. They work to do it. And some days, some days we have to work harder than others. Practitioners, anybody here with me? Some days are harder than others? Yeah, OK. I've spent years learning and knowing that as I believe, so is it done unto me. So I want the highest possible experience of life, not, not a settling or a status quo experience. You know, and you may have heard the, see, the saying, we don't see life as it is. We see it as we are. Right? So what I know is that letting go of the stuff that stops us or blocks us 
creates space for the stuff that lifts us and shifts us. So if we can be willing to let go of those blocks, to identify them, guess what? We have room. There's room at the end now. We're available. You know, I want to be in a full partnership, full frontal arrangement, agreement, friendship, working relationship with God. I want this to be fully collaborative, fully co-creative. I want the highest use of spiritual power. And what I know is what Ernest Holmes taught is that our highest use of spiritual power is possible only in conscious or unconscious cooperation with the nature of God or reality. We have to agree. We have to play along. So what else do we need, do we need to develop that spiritual power, that superpower? You know, anything we want to get better at requires practice. Talk to Gia, talk to Sam. A lot of practice. Thousands and thousands of hours, by the way, of practice. We have to practice willingness, surrender. Those are, those are the two ouches, right? Oh, God, do I have to be willing? Do I have to surrender? And here's the good one, abundant expectancy. Abundant expectancy, hope, anticipation. But we must be willing to let our old ideas about God, our old beliefs, and the purpose of life, let that go so that there's room that it, those ideas, the space that they were occupying can be replaced by new ideas that actually can lead us into a much greater level of joyful living and full expression. You know, Ernest Holmes taught, it's what we teach here, that self-expression is the sole and only purpose of life. I'm going to say that again, and let's all watch to see if I'm struck by lightning. <laughs> Self-expression is the soul and the only purpose of life. Okay. There's a great unlearning that most of us have to do, and it's this. We do not live that God may be glorified. We live because God is already glorified. How many of us grew up hearing this, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, glorify God and all that we did. I'm just here to glorify God, glorify God. And Ernest Holmes wrote, what kind of God would it be that would have to be glorified by us? Such a God would be in worse shape than we are, and that would be pretty bad. Are we willing to stop believing in this superstitious nonsense about an insecure God? You know, so many of us grew up believing that this, the deity, the Lord of all creation, the Holy of Holies had such a fragile ego that he'd have tantrums and literally destroy nations if we didn't make him look good, right? I got to tell you, if that was my kid, yeah, I, nobody wants a needs, or needs a God who's the result of really bad parenting. Seriously, I don't want that God, not, not, not on my watch. So we have to let go of those old ideas in favor of new ideas. We nurture and we develop our superpower of spiritual vision when we say yes to the kind of conviction that comes from surrender. It's the conviction that comes from surrender, and it is about that surrendering of the old tantrumy God. It's about the surrender of, I have to glorify this thing out here. Or it's the surrender and the judgment of, well, what if it is my purpose to just be happy, to express life? What is that? We have judgment on that. What if we could let go of that and just go, wow, we are here to celebrate, to celebrate God as joy, as creative expression, as loving each other. That's the purpose. That's the purpose. Am I getting agreement so far? Okay. When we surrender to the great and loving knowing that there is a power for good in the universe, we can use it and it can use us. We begin to understand and develop our own relationship with God. So surrendering to a spiritual conviction, my husband has this wonderful definition about um, surrender. It's not about giving up. It's about rising up. So surrender isn't about like giving in. It's rising up. It's turning within. It's rising up. It's opening up. Surrender is opening up, right? So Ernest Holmes wrote, every man is an inlet to the divine. Don't let the gender throw you. 
He wrote this back in the 40s, 30s and 40s. Every woman is an inlet to the divine. Wow, can we surrender to that? Can we surrender to that idea? Do we have room when we let go of the blocks of tantrumy God and the judgment and have room of being, ah, oh, what does that feel like to be an inlet to the divine? And he also wrote, let us practice the presence of God through the acknowledgement of that indefinable and indestructible spirit within us, that hidden self that never tires, fed by the deep eternal fires. Oh my God. That feels good, doesn't it? Think about that. That is who and what we are. Surrender to that. Bow down to, well, no, don't bow down. I'm going to say release into that, right? Move into that. Love into that. Let it love into you. Be that divine inlet. That is so powerful. In fact, I would say that if we all knew how magnificent we were, then yes, we would bow down before ourselves. Before ourselves. Because we are that divine and that magnificent. Ernest wrote, that, that he said, I believe that the time has come in the evolution of man when he needs to cooperate with the divine nature or he will never benefit by it much more than through the law of averages. In other words, we are all subject to the law of averages until we specialize out of it. So specializing out of the law of averages, think about it for a moment. What does that mean for you? What have you accepted or judged as being something that is out of your reach or you're not worthy of or you're too old or you're too young or you're, you're whatever you are. How can you move away from that law of averages and move into spiritual law, the spiritual law, which is always just eager and waiting like a, like a little kid, like a little kid saying, what can you give me to work with? Give me something to work with. I just want to create for you. I want to give to you. I want to give through you. Give it to me. Give it. Think about it. When, you're, when you come home, if you have a dog, some of you have dogs, right? And the dog's just going to wag that tail off because it's so excited to see you. That's what God wants to do through us. That's the excitement and the willingness. But are we being so proper it's God, the divine one. I oh, want to make sure I don't annoy God. And I certainly don't want to make God jealous. Can you imagine a God who is jealous? What is that about? That's the writing of humans. You know, we can make humans divine or we can take the divine and bring it down to the human level. I like the idea of raising all of us up to the divine level, right? If we're created in God's image, then why are we creating God in our image? If each is a unique individualization of this thing called life, then it follows that all the presence there is and all the power there is is back of each individual. That's in back of each of us flowing through us as us. There is nothing monotonous about the great scheme of life. There's nothing monotonous in the great scheme of life. The ability to live and the intelligence to know what to do exists at the very center of our being. Think about that. It's already there. It's already there. We did not put them there. We didn't put them. I didn't install it. You didn't install it. And we couldn't destroy that if we tried. We can't destroy our divinity. We, can't, we don't have the ability or the capacity or the power to do it. We can certainly stand in the way of that light and not know that we have it or pretend we don't have it or deny it or block it with our fear. Or we can step into the light and say, wow, this thing loves me so much. All it wants to do or he wants to do or she wants to do, however you identify, your infinite power, your higher power, your divine power and connection, all it wants to do is just party by means of me. It wants to celebrate and create and be happy and joyful and love. That's what God wants to do. So in other words, get with the program. Let me put it another way. Stop resisting your own sacred divinity. Surrender to it. Let it guide you. Let it define you. Let it fire you up. 
you know, Ernest Holmes. So obviously you're seeing this is a deep dive into Ernest Holmes' writing. And if you are new and you don't know anything about Ernest Holmes, he was the founder of this teaching, The Science of Mind. But what he did was he gathered together what he, he studied and studied and studied all of the world's religions and, and took what he felt were the most profound, beautiful, powerful, sacred, and, and empowering teachings he could find. And he put them together and found similarities within all of them so that it became a, philo a philosophy, a psychology, a way of life, a way of living, and free of dogma, free of dogma, free of unnecessary ritual or sacrifice. We will not be sacrificing any live animals tonight. We won't sacrifice anything tonight except, except our fears, our hesitancies, our egos, and our, our pasts, which may have kept us from really stepping into a greater knowing of who we are. That stuff you can leave on the altar. I promise I'll take care of it for you. If you want to come back and claim it next week, you can. But leave that here. Leave it on the altar, okay? And walk into a greater knowing. There is at the center of every man's being a unique individualization, but we are all drawn from the same life, the same wellspring of being, could we but see it. And there it is again. There it is again. Spiritual vision. It's the seeing. It's the seeing without eyes. It's the seeing with our hearts. It's the willingness to see, to perceive through another way. To see ourselves as spirit knows us. To know ourselves as spirit knows us. Ernest taught that we all have a divine pedigree. I just saw this today and it made me laugh. I loved it so much. We have a divine pedigree. pedigree and when we trace our pedigree back to the divine germ of life that impregnates everything, we loosen and dissolve our resistance to the greatest discovery of all, that the kingdom of heaven is within. It's within. We have a divine pedigree. You've already been blessed. You have already been blessed. You are here by divine right. You are here as the divine. You are here to do that. So I want you to know, and if you need permission, then we give you permission. Start seeing <sighs> without the use of your eyes, right? Start with the seeing that doesn't involve your eyes. Commit to the perception. Commit to perceiving that invites hope, creativity, and abundant expectancy. Because we do have within us a power that is greater than anything, anything that we shall ever contact in the physical world. It's a power that can overcome any obstacle in our lives and set us free, satisfied, and at peace. It sets us healed, prosperous, in a new light and a new life. So let's begin to use that power right here and right now. Let's pray. Mm. We relax into the arms of spirit. And we say, my good is my God. My expression on this planet is my God. My creativity is my God. My joy is my God. All of those qualities of life, of truth, of possibility, I allow those now to be the touchstones. For it is the truth of who and what I am, of who and what we are. For we recognize together that that infinite power and presence which has brought us all here together has brought us all here together for the purpose of midwifing ourselves and each other into the divine knowing, the perfect superpower of spiritual vision. For it is in this vision that we, oh, we rest we live, we move, and we have our being. And it has its being. It lives and moves and has its being in, as, and through us. So we, are yet, we say, yes, we are available to it. And we dance with it. We are partners with it. And we allow it to, to flow through every fiber, every tissue, every thought. Removing any blocks. 
removing any judgments, resentments, all of it, because we don't have time and we don't have space, quite frankly, so we let them go. And they are replaced <laughs> with the spaciousness of love. Oh, the beautiful spaciousness of love, of wholeness, of life. There is a rising up in this place for all of us. The rising up that begins from within and is carrying all of us into a higher knowing, a higher celebration for ourselves and for each other of the wholeness that is already there. We declare and we accept that, yes, we have that spiritual vision. We have that. That is who we are. It is what we are. And we are available to it. We set aside television. We choose spiritual vision. And we know that it is infinite vision, infinite knowing, infinite possibility. And we say yes because we are saying yes to the yes itself as we are one with the one. So I know for all of us that as we embrace and are willing and surrender into this good, surrender into this good, knowing that nothing that we love is lost, that we are just expanded, that we are opened up, and that we are made broader and bigger and brighter stars to shine this light that is God, that is love, that is spirit, that is life itself, that as we do that, the world rises with us. This rising tide, rising waters float all boats, and all of these boats are now sailing. I speak my word for peace in Ukraine and knowing that there is comfort, there is compassion, that there is everything needed, that there is wholeness in the form of food, of medicine, of healing, of understanding, of forgiveness. I speak my word of wholeness for divine spiritual vision for Russia and know that the truth, the truth of God is greater than any other idea and that all life surrenders to the light of truth and is blessed by it, is transformed by it. And for anything that might be pulling at our attention, any person, place, or thing, oh, we bless them with that same knowing. We surround them hmm, with the arms of God, the arms of spirit, knowing that the light is embracing on every level and that their vision is God's vision. Their vision is spiritual vision. Their vision is clear. It is profound. It is beautiful, it is whole, and it is wonderful. It is the magnificence of life itself. And I invite you to say with me our affirmation that is within your bulletin, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Let's say it together. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. We are abundantly blessed. We are abundantly expectant, and we are the light of God in radiant, robust expression. We allow that to be the greater truth, the greater knowing, and the vision for who and what we are and what life is. And with a sense of absolute gratitude that comes from knowing it is already done, I release this word into law, and it is done. I say, and so it is, and together we say, amen.
Yeah. Woo. Now that be some spiritual vision. <laughs> so now is when we accept tithes and love offerings, your gifts. And so I just invite you to hold them in your hand or to hold that idea, that knowing in your hand, hold it to your heart, and will you, oh, there, there's my microphone. Hold it to your microphone and say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Thank you, Gia. Thank you, Sam. Um, Gia, usually I have in my announcements like where they can find your music, but I don't. Where can we find your music? Ah! We can I find it at iTunes. Gia, C-I-A-M-B-O-T-T-I -T -T at iTunes. There Thank you, you. Of course. So check that out. And I want your outfit so you can give it to me and go home naked. Thank you. Okay, announcements, here we go. Um, so first, there's many ways that you can give to our church and support what we do here, and, and we support, also just... We need the support because apparently... <laughs> yes? Yes, we need support because we need a new chair. So if you need an arm, I can help. Please, give for the chair. So there are, there are many ways to give. One is on the back of your program. There is a QR code. You can scan that and give that way. You can also go to nhcrs.org slash give and tithe. And just so you know, when you tithe, it's not just for the chair. It, we also give to, we tithe, North Hollywood tithes to many organizations, including Red Cross and various places, including supporting the Ukraine, what's going on there. So when you tithe here, you're giving to the entire world. So thank you very much for that. We have prayer with a practitioner. It's available in service right here in person. Come on down front here, and you can pray with a practitioner. If you're on Facebook, you can move over to Zoom, and there is a one-minute miracle way for you. Next Sunday, I mean Wednesday, Meditation 650, service at 7 o'clock, and Reverend Sidney will be talking about God in drag. Okay, I can't wait to hear what that's about. God in drag. Let's figure out what that's about come next Wednesday. Um, also, very exciting opportunity, Japan. Dr. Mark is going to Japan, a spiritual adventure of a lifetime. If you are interested, please, it sounds wonderful. You can sign up outside at our table or at North Hollywood Church, religiousscience.org, and um, a wonderful opportunity, so don't miss that. Um, now, here we are. Pray like you've never prayed before. Rock your word with 
the woman, with the woman right here, <laughs> with that woman, you know what, here's what I gotta say, whatever the announcement says, I don't care. Do you wanna shift your life? Do you want to truly expand your experience on this plane? This is how you do it. You do it through prayer. You want to learn to really anchor yourself in affirmative prayer. You do not want to miss this class. Six weeks, um, sign up. You can sign up on the website. You can sign up outside or at the bookstore. But you don't want to miss this class because you want to shift your life, don't you? You want to upgrade, you want to up level, you want to experience your heart's desire. Here's how you do it, baby. You do it by rocking your word. So join Reverend Sydney, rock your word. And what I want to say, I, I'm out of control now. The class is starting on Tuesday and we don't know if it's gonna go, if we're gonna have enough people. So if you are hesitating, don't hesitate because this class is really awesome. This is my own curriculum, and it is very powerful. And you're going to be there. I'm, gonna, I'm there. See, I would go just for her. <laughs> um, I'm in. And, and Doreen's going to go. And so, see, and there we see? have it. A lot of people. So sign up now while you can, or else you won't get to do the class. Right, or fix the chair. Or fix the chair. No, seriously, you guys, really, come on. I'm, I'm telling you. Prayer has changed everything in my world and my being. You want to learn to pray right and with power and with feeling. This class will set you up. So don't miss it. Sign up. And if the cost is an issue, it's $175. If that cost is an issue, do it anyway. Do it anyway. Do it anyway because someone will pay for you. We will when you we will make it happen. So sign up for this yeah, wonderful really class. Happen. Whether you are able to exchange in terms of service or helping with the class, we will make it happen. Just take the class. Just sign up, change your life, shift your life, stand in the power and the presence. Yep. Hello. Amen. Can I have an amen? Amen. 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 And uh, also, uh, this Sunday, 1 p.m. on Zoom, we have grief support with our beautiful Carol Winokur. And grief is not just losing somebody. Grief is also you've lost your job, you've lost a pet. You, grief is uh, just what we've experienced in, during the pandemic. There's all kinds of grief. This is a place to come and heal your grief. Come and heal and heal and heal. Also, save the date, July 3rd. We're going to celebrate with a weekend a free barbecue after the 11.30 service. Join us, delicious food, fellowship, music by, oh, hello, music by Mary Highland. You do not want to miss that. And Gilbert Acuna will also be having a used book sale on that day and the 10th. You don't want to miss this. You know, we come to church because we want to be in community. We want to be sharing and caring for each other and being community. So this is a wonderful opportunity for you to party with all your North Hollywood friends. Um, if you are a loved one, can use some enhanced spiritual support. We have a pastoral care team ready to help. So you can reach out to them through our website. We have a Zoom patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation, hello. Um, every morning, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 a.m., just for 20 minutes, anchor your day, start your day with a solid meditation. How beautiful is that? And anything you need to know, links, uh, e-blast, newsletters, all that's going on here at North Hollywood, go to nhrcrs.org. Wait, nhrcrs.org. NHCRS.org. Yes. There you go. That's where you want to go. That's where you want to go for all that you need to know. Thank you. Be blessed. Be well. And all is good. Right, Sam? Absolutely. I just want to say one thing before yes. we go. Yes. Um, often life does what life does, which means that people will move into their greater experience, their greater life. And um, one of our beloved practitioners made his transition um, on the 9th, and we will be having a memorial service for him, and that's Gary Graham, and he has passed away, and the service will be July 9th at 10 a.m. here and on Zoom, so we will have more information about that, and we would ask that you would just hold him, his family, his sister, Kathy, and our practitioner court in prayer, because this is a loss to our community, and who was quite beloved, and, and a, a joy to be around. 
Um, thank you for Barbara Berg to holding vigil, Dean Regan, our support, Zoom support, Brenda um, Jordan, Diane Satterley, which is impressive because she's in Kansas right now. Uh, lights and sound, Adam Cashin, thank you so, more, so much. Colleen Butler was your greeter in Orsha, Orsher? She was your Orsher, and man, she Orshes like nobody. <laughs> Sanctuary Media Team, Doreen, Remo, Nikki Savara, and Blair Thompson. Gia, you are awesome. Sam, you are awesome. Liz, you are awesome. I'm Sydney, I'm pretty awesome too, but I think you're all awesome, so thank you so much. Let's do this. Hey everybody, let's stand and join in one more time with Gia as we all sing Blessed Always. Oh. <laughs> Those who just became practitioners know that. <laughs> like Brenda. Yes. That's our job. Oh, we have Leona asking for prayer. Her hand is up. Or Lena. Lena, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't have my glasses on. That's my fault. Let's see. That's, <laughs> you know, they give us such teeny tiny letters here. Lena, I'm sorry. Right now, Lena. All right. And Reverend Trish. There you go. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And I don't know if um, Mona's going to make it in tonight. If she does, if we can go into a patio room, yeah, Jeff and Mona. And if she doesn't, I'll be here and you'll hear be here being silly, right? We we well, that's my plan. I know no other way to be. It's just down to us, just us here. It's just us. Very good. Very good. Looks like Ray is deep in meditation. She might be. It's it's eleven oh one. Yeah. On this coast. Probably, probably past her bedtime. You're doing very well for eleven oh one, Mr. Jeffrey Paul Whitman. Wow! Thank you very much. That was a double. That was great. I've Thanks. been around you a while. <laughs> Thanks, Brenda. Thanks. I appreciate it. I appreciate that too. <laughs> 